Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. I totally forgot to do an intro for today's video, so I'm out here in the dark, in the cold, doing one for you. So enjoy today's video. We did, we rendered lard and made canned pineapple and made pineapple scrap cordial from the skins and the ends of the pineapple uh, and canned that as well. And I made dough at the end of the day and you know, all the fun stuff. So enjoy watching and I will see you again tomorrow. Thanks guys. Today the first job of the day was to render the lard. So I bought five kilos of clean back fat from the butcher and it was pretty clean. It was surprisingly clean considering some of the stuff that I've gotten before. So all I did was I sliced it up into little cube pieces or strips and made sure that I cut any bits of meat and stuff off it. If you have any bits of meat on the lard when you're rendering it, it will flavor the lard and discolor it. And that's fine depending on what the use is, but the cleaner the fat the cleaner the yard it, lard is so I cleaned off all the little bits and pieces after that I ran it through my mincer obviously the more surface area you've got of the lard the quicker it's going to render and the more liquid lard you are going to get from it so the smaller the pieces the better so I ran it all through my mincer and I just ran it through on the bigger grinding plate uh, chunks at a time and as I got all those chunks going I filled up bowls with it so you can just cut it up if you don't have a mincer cut it as small as you can by hand it will still work it'll take a little bit longer you probably want to leave the heat a little bit lower so that it's cooking longer and slower and then it your little bits that are left over are going to be larger bits rather than little bits that's all but it still works perfectly fine uh, then I put some in the pan so you always put a little bit in the pan to start with and get that going on low heat just to get a bit of liquid in the bottom of the pan so nothing burns and then as I was mincing it I was just putting the bowls of minced fat into the pan as I did them so I was just cutting mincing pouring it into the bowl into the pan and giving it a stir and going on like that as needed once it's uh, started rendering down quite a bit the it bubbles a bit more uh, you don't want it boiling but it does start to simmer quite well and it does get a little bit brown as the bits of fat turn into crackles so the longer you take it the like the further you take those crackles the darker your fat will get and then have the potential for that flavor and color aspect as well so we didn't take ours too far because we were hoping for some pretty clean flat fat from this batch so we took it off once it just started to get to that amber color I also had to work on the pineapples today so I bought 15 pineapples for about $12 this month and I have been slack and have only just got to them so I needed to cut the tops and bottoms off the pineapples and then I slice the skin off. Now I wasn't being particularly careful here because I am going to be using it for making cordial. So I didn't mind that there was a little bit of extra flesh on the skin uh, and it was easier to just take a little bit of extra skin off and take those little eyes off rather than taking the eyes off afterwards and spending the time to do that. So I sliced all the skin off them all, tops and tails off them all and put them aside um that oh, actually sorry i didn't put them aside what i did was i cut them into little dices as i was going so these were to be canned for pineapple topping for pineapple on pizzas and hummingbird cakes and things like that so i just cut them up into diced small evenly sized pieces and put them in a bowl ready to go for later as i was peeling them uh, this is what the fat looked like once it was strained into bowls. Daryl did it to help out and I forgot to film him doing it. So all we did was we strained all the crackles out and left the fat in some bowls to cool a little bit so it was a bit easier to handle. Alrighty, so once the skins, once I got all the skins and cores out, I minced them up. So the best, the best results for the cordial is to get it as small as possible. So I used my trusty Thermomix and placed all the skins and cores into the Thermomix in batches and ground it all up into a nice minced size, very small. Again, we're a bit like the lard, 
more surface area, more results you're going to get when you're trying to get flavor and juice out of things. So by chopping it up like that, we're going to get a richer uh, cordial out of it. So I also added other things. So this is a Sally Wise uh, recipe. I will try to remember put, to put the recipe link in the comments, but you can Google Sally Wise and pineapple cordial and it comes up pretty easy. So to it gets added uh, water and some ginger, lemon zest and lemon juice. I used some of my frozen lemon juice and frozen lemon zest because I didn't have any fresh at the moment and I used fresh ginger from the garden. I use a little bit more ginger than it asks for because I like the flavor of it um, and I think I also use a little bit more lemon too because we like it to be that little bit tartar. Once you've added all that it goes on the heat. Once the lard had cooled enough to handle the containers we poured it into jars. So we have a funnel and just a little metal sieve that fits in the funnel and we just poured it into jars. We're just reusing the ghee jars here for that. We reuse these ghee jars for a lot of things. They can be canned in. I have new lids to be able to can in them. We don't process the lard. It's shelf stable. It's only what we got out of it. We'll, we'll use it in a fairly short amount of time so we don't feel the need to do so. Uh, I believe you can process the jars if you really want to, but I don't think it's necessary. What We don't feel it's necessary. So we just poured it into the ghee jars. It's hot when it goes in the jars, so theoretically if you put the lid on while it's hot it will um, somewhat seal up anyway. Uh, it'll suction the lids down. Hot pack, uh, um, open kettle canning is what it's called I believe, but it, anyway it's shelf stable regardless so it doesn't really matter. After that I filled all the jars with the pineapple chunks. Um, I just evenly stuck them all in the jars. I have a large range of jars here at the moment. It's <laughs> uh, I need to buy more of the 500ml and under jars. I seem to have a lot of the larger jars but not much in the way of the small stuff so I do need to get some more jars. I'm running very low as I keep on getting all this produce put up. Uh, I topped them all off with water. <laughs> Normally I'd top them up with pineapple juice and I had a two litre of pineapple juice here that was its intention was for this for this particular canning job except that while I was shopping Daryl let them drink the pineapple juice so I went looking for the pineapple juice and it no longer existed. So you can use the juice that you make from the cores and that to can it in but I had other <laughs> other things I wanted to use that for so I uh, used water and that's fine it's um, it's going to dilute the pieces of pineapple a little bit but it's it's perfectly fine so I filled them with water and then I debubbled the jars with the back end of the spatula and put all the lids on all the jars so as I said a, a huge variety of jars here I've got lug lids I've got Fowler's Vicola and I've got ball mason jars it's just whatever I could find in that sort of a size range because I didn't want to do it in two bigger jars because it just ends up the kids will eat it because it's open but I'd prefer to get more meals out of it more pizzas more cakes whatever out of it by using the smaller jars so they all got put in the water bath canner for 15 minutes I then had to strain the pineapple cordial. So straining this cordial is not the easiest thing in the world because you kind of want to strain it when it's hot because you're going to get the most out of the pulp. But it's hot. <laughs> so we used some cheesecloth to do it, but uh, it, it is challenging. And the more you squeeze it, the more residue you're going to get in your cordial as well. And that doesn't bother some people. It doesn't bother us. But some people want really clear cordial. So if you're wanting really clear cordial, you're going to have to double, triple strain it and we just don't have anything here I really should get myself a big nut milk bag for that first uh, that first squeezing and then some muslin or something to run it through when I'm putting in the jars I don't know we don't really care about the little bit of pulp in it we have it with um, soda stream anyway so you don't even notice it and if anything it just sits at the bottom you just don't take those last couple of mouthfuls so we strained it through you want to make sure that you give it whatever you do you either 
mashing it into a colander or you're using a cloth or whatever else you want to make sure you do it really well because there is plenty of juice in those scrap bits and you have to you have to work to get it out uh, so Daryl and I did that over a span of time getting as much as we could once we got it all I weighed it because the recipe states that you are to do one cup of sugar to one cup of liquid um, that's a little on the high side for us so I weighed out the liquid and it was 3.6 plus kilos of liquid uh, and that would equate to approximately 3.6 kilos of sugar because one for one now I know sugar is around about 200 grams a cup more than 250 so say 3.2 kilos of sugar anyway that's far more than I was willing to use so we used about 1.75 kilos which is worked out around about the half mark uh, and added some citric acid as well to that and stuck it back on the stove to all to come back to a simmer so that that's that uh sugar dissolved properly if you don't dissolve it properly it's going to settle when you put it in your jars and it's not very nice you want it to dissolve you don't want to take it to a boil but you do want to take it to a simmer and hold it there for say five or ten minutes so that sugar is all well and truly uh emulsified with everything else then we put it into the jars. So I've just used quart jars here because I have pouring lids for these quart jars. So it made sense to use those. I did can them. Uh, you don't have to. You can have it in the fridge. But this is more than we will use short term. And we don't have very much fridge space. So I find that it's a good idea to can it too. Because it means that once you finish the first jar. You are slower to open the next jar because it's sealed on the shelf so uh, we canned this one in the quart jars and I can't remember the time I looked it up so um, I looked up it must be the same as pineapples but in quart jars so it was probably 25 minutes 20-25 minutes uh, so we and I used the seam canner for that one I believe so we now have that on the shelf which is wonderful uh, then I finished off the day doing my dough as I have the tendency to do so I wanted to make flatbread dough for the next day except that no one had washed my KitchenAid bowl so I don't I wash as I go but I it's not my responsibility to do the dishes because I do a lot of other things uh, and so it's the kids job to do the dishes generally speaking and as kids have a tendency to do they don't go looking for more dishes they just do the dishes that are right there in front of them so my KitchenAid bowl was missed so I did it by hand which my flatbread dough isn't really a by hand dough <laughs> it's a little stiff but I did manage it so I mixed it all up and did it by hand and did some stretches and folds over the next couple of hours of the evening to try and get all that flour hydrated and into that dough it was a very stiff dough because it's cold and because it's a low hydration dough because it's a flatbread dough but it worked out fine and the next video you'll see me make uh, breakfast and stuff with the flatbreads they rolled out perfectly fine so I can do that if I have to but it was a lot of work and a bit hard on the hands and the shoulders uh, so that was done and I also made a double batch of the food bod master loaf dough uh, I did that all in one bowl. I'm fairly confident with handling my dough these days so I felt okay about doing a double batch in a bowl and then splitting it and shaping it the next day. So I mixed up a double batch of that as well and this gives two 500 gram odd loaves. Uh, 500 grams worth of flour. Must work out bigger than that because you've got water content and everything else I've never weighed one but two average sized loaves so we can eat one in a sitting between the eight of us easily uh, probably two depending on what we were eating but we tend to use it as a side or a open face sandwich type thing we don't tend to eat it as sandwiches or anything so we try and stretch that dough which is partly why I cook that particular dough partly why I cook a boule is because we can stretch it really well because we don't generally have it with soup or we cut it nice and thick and then we top it and grill it or whatever so double batch of that in and then I did all my usual starter so my starter is one to one I use Costco Baker's flour and filtered water and I just weigh in I have a nice big jar that is stored on my bench at the moment in the weather that is currently in summer it's regularly goes in my fridge and I use it straight from the fridge 
So I use Costco Baker's flour and filtered water one for one. I normally do about 200, 250 grams of each into my jar, mix it well, and I have a cloth cover for the top of it, which I find works really well. So the starter is all sorted. At the moment, it's taking a good, uh, at that quantity, at that high amount that I'm mixing. Like if I only did 50 grams of each, it'd be a lot quicker, but because I do it in 200 gram lots, it's probably taking 48 hours to peak again, but that's fine because I am not baking as much at the moment I'm I tend to bake more towards the end of the month when I haven't got so much prep to go on and we like then I'll do bagels and all that sort of stuff because I have the time to do that so it's all sorted and put to the side and waiting for the next time I need it so that was everything for the day thank you very much for joining me and I hope I will see you again tomorrow with the next lot of things and I don't even know what I'm going to do but I will share Thanks for watching.